<laughs> That's good. That's why I asked you the question. The Deer Stalker's Guide to you know, Guiding. Paul's right. teaching Sam the ropes as they hunt Muntjac. Plus, flip flops and feet position. Perfect ben explains how to stand for a target. We have news, we have hunting YouTube, we have the latest from the Saddleworth Moor wildfires. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Childerly has a young Skywalker to work with. Sam Austin has joined the ranks of Childerly Sporting to help keep the game birds and, when needed, guide the deerstalking clients. And that is what this morning is all about. What's it like working for Childerly Sporting? Oh, it's the best. It's a dream. <laughs> as well as the force, Paul gives him a pair of Zeiss binos, a set of sticks, and a Shooter King smock as it is falling down today. Um, Sam's done, done a bit of stalking before um, on a couple of states he's been on with Rowan and um, Muntjac. He's guided a few of the family members and, and uh, a couple of the friends and bits and pieces and shot loads of deer himself, so the bases are all there. Without the pressure of paying clients, there's going to be some role play over the next two mornings to ensure safety, 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 and of course, stalking success. Catchy name for a series. What's going on, Charles? Maybe you don't do rain. Yeah, I know. It's the first time ever, I reckon. Paul has guided and been guided too many times to count, so knows the highs and the lows. Here are just a few of the things he wants Sam to remember. Hunt if you're hunting yourself and you've got a friend with you. What distance they're comfortable shooting out to, if they get in the, in the vehicle, no matter what, even if they tell you a hundred times it's safe, it's open, ask them to open the bolt, yeah. period. And it's up to you during the whole hunt is to keep your eye or ear on that safety catch yeah, yeah, yeah. because sometimes you'll 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 be up and uh, it presents a shot safety catch comes off then it runs round and you got they got to put the gun back on the shoulder and just say safe back on yeah, yeah, yeah. and no one ever questions it oh yeah sorry and yeah. the amount of times that people do it right carrying a gun you'll get some that will carry the rifle like this um, which is fine when they're on their own but obviously like I say it's unloaded Okay. Um, but you'll get them, you'll be guiding you with the binoculars there and they'll turn and you'll end up having a, a muzzle right past your face. That's one. The other one is they'll have it over the top of the shoulder. It's a heavy barrel rifle. Okay. And it's like this. And as they turn, the rifle will be, and you'll get a back of your head. I've had three near misses. Yeah, where rifles have gone off and stuff. It's getting back to the ladder of lives, more important than with an animal, basically one rifle client. Okay. If you just want to try it, try the trigger. Perfect. No yeah. yeah. Perfect. Cool. Ideal. There is a lot to think about as each client will need to be looked after in a different way. The skill is to meet the expectation of the client while making sure the stalk is enjoyable, successful and safe. Well, this morning's outing has been two out of the three, as we haven't got a deer, but maybe Paul hasn't got the tuning right on his new call. Um, I bought it when we went to cross to um, Jagdenhunt in Germany. It's a Hubertus call, but it's a, a plastic one. I'm not, I don't know yet, I'm still sort of like, it's the first time I used it. It's a bit... <whistles> sounds plastic isn't it? I don't know, it'll be alright, we'll get, we'll get used to it. Same as anything, you get used to it. Um, wasn't really a fair test today because like, they weren't calling because um, it's wet. They're tucked up in the cover where we should be, maybe tucked up home. 
Is he um, teaching you how to suck eggs, or, or are you learning something on the hoof here? No, no, I mean, well, you never stop learning. I mean, I'm only young, so every little helps. Some of it already know, other bits, just little things, it's always quite helpful. Like to do with the clients he was talking about earlier. I've not actually done much professional client based stalking, so actually, like an insight into what they're like, just a heads up about certain aspects, um, is quite helpful just to ease into it when we do start stalking. The following morning, Sam takes on the role of guide. It's a much nicer day and a much nicer start. See it? Get a bar and stop it. See it, David? Park it. Wait. Hey! Let it come a bit more. Let it go another foot. So you go for it all, okay? So you'll go for the whole scenario. So tell me to wait. wait. <laughs> Get it into clear where you think you could shoot it, you stop it. Yeah. And then I can hit the shot because it's in the clear. But you wait until you think it's ready. Yeah. Get ready to stop it. Loud. Try and next shoot it. No. Sure, I reckon I can next shoot it. No, wait for the chest. I'm an experienced shot. Right, I'd rather you wait for the chest. Okay, fair enough. You're in charge. I'm going to be clear in a second. As soon as he comes past that stinging nettle. Okay. Okay, cool. Take it. Take it. Go on, later. Hey! Woo! Hey! You David? Why do you think I hit it? It's high, it's like high shoulder. High, I don't know. I, I, I pulled off it when I... Yeah, high shoulder. High shoulder. Okay. Is it dead? Down? Yeah, it's on the ground. What do I do? Good shot. And, and no. Keep safety on. What? Load or unload? Uh, unload it. Sure? Then leave it loaded. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, good. That's why I asked you the question yeah, because, yeah, yeah. you know, right. So basically, always load, okay? Yeah. Until you go. There's a possibility you're going to get yeah, exactly. another one. Right? No. Nope. We get across there, even if it looks dead, you can get there and it can yeah. get up and go, okay? So, there's a couple of things. Obviously, you can see a reaction most of the time more than the person on the gun. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you'll know if it's heart shot, neck shot. Like you said, basically then it's high, high shoulder yeah. stroke, neck shot. The cover was so high. Yeah. And then this is a obviously a twenty-two to fifty. So, so we don't want to break up any bullets or anything. Obviously, I didn't want to go through the, the brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so you'll see, you'll know the reaction roughly of the animal. So you'll say, okay, reload. A lot of the time they they won't reload, so you make sure they reload safety on. Yeah. Tell them go through that, and then when you're approaching an animal, you know if it's a good art shot, you you know you're pretty much guaranteed yeah, not yeah, be a, yeah. uh, a follow-up shot. Um, if it's a bad shot and they're not competent, just say yeah. I think it's best if I take the rifle. Yeah, yeah. Two reasons: one is you'll be more confident to shoot, you know, get an animal on the deck to save it getting away, yeah, yeah, yeah. and also the other reason is you'll know roughly where it's going to go to, and you'll know where the safety areas are because the animal will just run in any direction. It could run towards a footpath. Yeah, and if you're yeah. trying to tell a client not to shoot there, you can shoot there and they can't shoot yeah, there. It's impossible. Yeah, it so, yeah. With 11. Or, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, but good. Okay, right, all over to you again. <laughs> I do like using a smaller caliber just for that reason. You haven't got the big boom and you, uh, and a big crack, so you're not disturbing the whole area. And telling everyone you're around. Good job. Do you want to unload the rifle? So you congratulate them. Yeah. Well done, you said unload the rifle, put on safe. Um, so well done, good stuff. And that's when a lot of a lot of people, um, they do, because they just shot you know, a lifetime yeah, buck or whatever, yeah, yeah. they get excited and grabbing the animal and rifles loaded. Perfect. Yeah, so what we've got here then, Sam? So it feels like a lean doe. Yep. Um, so, good one to take, so she's not leaving pendant young. That's it. Um, 
got one about. Yep. Yes, yeah, so it's a young doe. Um, perfect. Perfect one to shoot. See when she comes out, she's a small doe. So, if this was a gold medal muntjac buck, you've got to do your photograph because people come and they want to have a photograph of it. And I want a photograph of my animal. I quite enjoyed that stalk this morning. Lovely. So, I want you to set it up on that any way you want. Yep. I'll leave it to you. And then I'll just give you a few sort of like tips on where to, yep. where and what and how and what's a good look and not a good look. And we'll let you do one first of all. A lot of pressure under Sam, really. One with a camera and one with me, so you know, <laughs> I'm super bloody <laughs> critical. No, they bloody wouldn't, you know, it's a fair play to him. Um, yeah, going, going under just like scrutiny. And the people that are watching it, you know, there's loads of things we all sort of like do and stuff, and you know, it's easy That's to pick holes, to, basically. It's to learn to drive almost. It is, yeah, to totally. Drive, yeah. But then yeah. You're, you yeah. develop your own yeah. techniques. Technique, basically. exactly, yeah. And, um, you know, it's very difficult, I'll say, for Sam this morning, but it was easier for him being the, uh, the client last week than it was being the guide this morning, I think. But it's good. Under pressure, again, under pressure, he said some important things at the right time. When we got to the animal, I just about to interrupt him, and he said, make the rifle safe. So that, that was a really important thing. You know, he's in the animal, um, he waited, patient, looked at the animal, he knew what he was looking at. When I asked him what it was, young lean doe, simple. And as he does more, he'll get his own feel on the whole sort of experience of, of guiding people, really. Because at the moment he's thinking about safety first, so he wanted you to, to unload the rifle. Exactly. But then there's the whole sort of entertainment element where congratulations. That's right, yeah, yeah. Come on yeah, down. yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Happy Christmas. You've got your buck of a lifetime. Um, so yeah, it, it is. You sort of do all that, but in the background, your mind's ticking, you know, obviously for me, I've got other guides out and bits and pieces. So I'm thinking, you know, I hope they've done this, hope they've locked the gate, hope they're, you know, the client that went with him, you know, he, he, he wasn't that confident. I hope he shot the animal correctly. Um, the guy that I'm with, did he put it on safe? Yes, he did. Click, click. You know, all these things are running through your mind 100 mile an hour and you're so processing and making it a, a fun, a good experience for the guys as well. So it is, a, it is definitely an art. And the more you do, the more you get relaxed and the more you just, just go over those, you know, basic things every time you go out. With the animal down and the rifle safe, it's time to capture the moment. With muntjac as well, it's quite nice if you get one on a tree stump, just to put the tail out. Yeah. Because a lot of these guys from Europe, you know, quite like to see the whole, yeah. And it gives them a you know, full shot of the whole, whole animal. Now Paul does take a good shot. His Instagram and Facebook posts are works of art, and David maintains he's taught him everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> Paul says he picked up quite a few tips from hunting in Africa, where they take this part of the job very seriously. I'm sure there's a couple of good ones. See, see when you're looking down, yeah, doesn't look quite as good as when you're down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. do another one and get even, get the thing yeah, even lower. Down, yeah. yeah, it's what I have to do on the belly. The key thing is angle of shot and not being afraid to direct the hunter. Arm down, head right, breathe in, that sort of thing. Coming closer. Yeah, I should photograph, by the way. Yeah. No, I should do. <laughs> do you? <laughs> mm. Look at that. Oh, look, head's touching in the middle. <laughs> Eventually, Sam gets the shot Paul is looking for and is one step closer to becoming a Jedi stalking guide. For more information about Shooter King clothing, go to shooterking.co.uk. For Zeiss Sports Optics, go to zeiss.com. And Sacco Rifles, go to sacco.fi. Yeah, so next time you come up here, if the wind's, if the wind's coming that way, Thank you, Paul, showing that guiding is more than just putting your client in front of an animal. Now, from front and centre to full frontals, it's David back from New Zealand with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The wildfires raging across Saddleworth Moor in Yorkshire have sparked a rapid response from the area's gamekeepers. Helping firefighters with equipment and logistics, staff from local shooting estates were among the first on the scene, which is on land owned by United Utilities and managed by the RSPB. 
One of the keepers, Richard Bailey, explains what happened. We are oh, about an hour 20 minutes from the site itself, but we can see smoke rising from there. Um, and then we got a phone call from United Utility, the agent mm. there, to just see whether we could mobilise and gain keep it in the area with our fogging units and uh, go and give them a hand. Antis tried to blame grouse shooters for the fire and were embarrassed when they found out it was on RSPB managed land. Several news organisations, including the BBC, have since pointed out that the grouse moor management, such as careful Muirburn, might have benefited wildlife and created natural fire breaks. I think the severity possibly could, be, could have been reduced if there was more management on the ground. You know, we're restricted by constraints from natural England on what we can do. You know, you can't look into the future or have a crystal ball, but yes, it's all part of management tool which um, we want to use and we get restricted on all the time. And you can see Richard at the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre on the first day of the Game Fair at Ragley Hall on the 27th of July 2018, where Charlie will be interviewing him on stage about the Saddleworth wildfires. Visit thegamefair.org for details. A car has killed 10 foxhounds and injured a huntsman. The Cottesmore hounds were out on their early morning exercise when a car drove into them at speed, killing five and injuring another five so badly they had to be put down. The car also injured a member of the hunt staff. This footage is of the surviving hounds at the hunt's open day last weekend, five days after the tragedy. The British Game Alliance has posted its list of assured shoots and agents on its website. If you're shooting in the UK, you can now search and see if your shoot is supporting the initiative. Nearly 100 shoots have joined up in the last month. A wildlife trust has reignited the debate of whether cats should be locked up at night. Montgomeryshire Wildlife Trust posted this film of a cat munching its way through a nest of pied flycatchers. It eats the lot. The Scottish Game Fair took place at Schoon Palace last weekend. It was a fabulous couple of days out with events for kids shooting, fishing, dogs, a display of stalking ponies or garrons, and all of it in uncharacteristically un-Scottish beautiful weather. Run by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, it was an occasion to celebrate 30 years of the Trust's association with the show. Thanks to Alistair Hutchins for sending in this film and to Al Gabriel for putting him up to it. For next year's event, go to scottishfair.com. As temperatures soar across the UK and Ireland, Films of animals trying to cool down are going viral. This tawny owl cooling off outside Driffield in Yorkshire was filmed on a trail cam, and the Irish Post put this film up of a dog desperate for a swim. And finally, where's a good place to watch hunting TV apart from the obvious? Well, the answer surprisingly could be Netflix. It's made a drama about Scottish deer stalking that's so good it won an award at the Edinburgh Film Festival. Set in the Highlands, it's about a deer stalking trip that goes wrong. Well, it is a drama. Meanwhile, for the American hunting market, the legacy of a white-tailed deer hunter is a comedy with Josh Brolin about a hunter called Buck Ferguson who takes his trusted cameraman on an epic weekend adventure to reconnect with his young son. Something for everyone. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, a quick shout out to Daryl Pimperton. It's his 26th birthday this Friday, the 6th of July, and Dominica Marrick sent us these pictures with the request, I say, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daryl. May you never live this down. Next up, Ben Husthwaite is putting his best foot forward. <laughs> People always ask me about feet position. How should I stand? When we spoke earlier about fit ass, that can be different because we have to turn and shoot in many different ways. We're not restricted. If we're going to shoot from a shooting position at sporting, we're tend generally going to shoot in one direction. So we can, most of the time we can be set to face one. Both shots are going to be similar, similar placement. How I like to work things out is if you draw a kill point line 
straight through your station. So we're gonna kill it here, run a line straight through. I would then place Dave's front toes on that line and his back heel, and then twist to personal comfort. That gives him the perfect stance. He's gonna be comfy at the whole point, at the kill point. If he's not comfy at the whole point, I don't care. Nothing happens over there. The kill point is where we must have the perfect posture. But on this, as a right-handed shooter, Dave's weak side is his right-hand side. Okay, Dave, if you can mount the gun for me. So Dave's now in a neutral position. Heel, toe, kill point, barrel going the same way. If I ask Dave to swing to his right, towards me, that's about your limit. Yeah. That's as much as Dave can come to me. So as a right-handed shooter, that's as far as he can come. If I ask Dave to swing the other way, he'll be able to keep going and 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 going. So whenever you're shooting, you have to defend your right side. If you had a left to right, followed by a right to left, for instance, I would stand more this way, favoring the finishing move on the left because I can still shoot the right unless I have time to move my feet. It's a key fact that people misinterpret that the right-hand side is their weaker side when swinging a gun. Footwear? What should one wear when shooting clay? <laughs> <laughs> um, I live in my flip-flops and I actually shot more hundred straights in flip-flops than I have in, in tennis shoes. Um, the, uh, and on, Where do we go with it? <laughs> and the CPSA spent a lot of money changing the rules so I couldn't. So, uh, like the classic, um, the, the non-registered events, the Essex Masters, I will, I will wear flip-flops, but we all know the rules now, CPSA registered events or FITAS, the rules state closed toes. So, you know, something comfy and flat is what, is what we should be wearing. Thank you, Ben. I am more of a Crocs man myself. Now from open-toed sandals to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Waffenland TV is out with the first episode of a series it calls Mountain Hunter. Not much talking and a lot of wildlife in beautiful Alps. Potterek 81 hunting is well outside his Polish comfort zone out after big game in South Africa, including Impala, Oryx, Buffalo, Waterbuck, Red Heart Beast and Springbok. For a flavour of Argentinian dove shooting, a Dane called Erland is enjoying Cordoba with Limpopo and Diana hunting tours. Lots of Danish, but you get the picture. Down under, BJ Holdsworth sets up and pulls off a deer hunt with a client called James, who has come from Australia to stalk fallow bucks and red stags in the hills of New Zealand. Ben DB brings out his mid-year hunting summary. Red deer and chamois all filmed on public land in New Zealand. No shooting, but plenty of animals. In Series 8, Episode 5 of Solo Hunter, American bow hunter Remy is after water buffalo in Australia. Whether or not you like bow hunting, this is 20 minutes of stylish filming. Recep Issa from Turkey brings out his first Ibex hunt film for a couple of months. A shooter called Ilka Yar man takes a great bezoar ibex billy and finally pulsar gets it going on feral pigs in texas usa it's 60 hogs down with dry creek outfitters that's it for this week i've put all these films into a playlist for you click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description if you have a youtube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, you can pop your email address into our register page, our constant contact form, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain, at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And you can buy shares in Field Sports Channel. Go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares. It only remains for me to say good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.